I'm David Tower and welcome to the Theories of Everything program. Viewers, this is the fourth and final program in our big picture series, Theories of Self. In our first three programs, we examined the major components of self and identity. We examined the subconscious, consciousness, we examined memory, we looked at the emotions and personality. In this fourth program, we'll look at the process of self, the evolutionary process of self, and where it may be leading in the future, because it's a very dynamic thing. Self is an evolutionary process because it began the understanding of self, the emergence of self and identity began from the very earliest animals, probably. Um, we can trace it back to there, we can trace it life back in fact to those earliest animals around about 500 million years ago. In a previous program we examined the threshold from single-celled organisms to multi-celled organisms which probably occurred around 600 million years ago. But by about 550 million, 500 million years ago the first tiny sort of tadpoles, little tadpoled animals with heads and tails and a very small back, backbone and the beginnings, the very beginnings of a nervous system and perhaps tiny, tiny proto-brain started to evolve. And at that point something changed because they needed to understand the beginnings, the first inklings, if you like, of identity. Remember, it's only in recent times that we've been able to look back like this because a hundred years ago, for example, only a hundred years ago, were the developments an emergence of electricity and the combustion engine and flight and radio, all those major things that we take for granted today. Today we're born into an incredible reality. Each generation is born into a different reality. Our reality just happens to be one that is about to show its real potential, is about to enable us to go back and look at the very earliest beginnings of life and understand that process of evolution towards ourselves, to understand ourselves for the first time. And one of the biggest breakthroughs there, combined with the emergence of computers 50 years ago, combined with the early uh, imaging techniques of the body, the earliest uh, CAT scans and now the earliest magnetic resonance imaging, processes, brain scanning processes. For the first time we're able to understand the mental processes, the thoughts, the functions of the brain in fact, that drive us in our day-to-day -day environment. And by understanding the brain through those technologies we can now go back into the past and understand the evolution. Because you can look at life as a continuum, viewers. You can look at it as something in space and time that continuously evolves. Because of the new technologies, we're able to observe this sequence. We're able to observe the genes that were there in the very earliest tiny animals through to fruit flies and are still conserved. Blocks of genes, 10% of the early genes of fruit flies, for example, are still there in the human genome. We can see them today. Because with the new technologies we can not only understand the brain and the emerging science now, neuroscience and brain cells, um, we, can, we can understand all the other elements as well. We've got technologies that enable us to sequence the genome. So the geno our gen human genome has been sequenced but so have a, a number of other animals including our nearest relatives, primates, but also going right back to bacteria, to fungi, uh, to various viruses, parasites, etc. So this gives us an incredible bird's eye view, if you like, of how we've come to be the way we are today. And this not only shows us the, the genetic processes going on, but overflows into the behavioural processes, the emotional processes as well. So here we are today on this new threshold with this new vision, if you like. Right on the threshold between being able to understand the past and how we got here and how we may evolve into the future. 
So that's extraordinarily exciting. And if we go back, if we go back around that to those earliest animals, we see that the very first thing they had to do is differentiate themselves from their environment. They were impacted by all sorts of sensations. They had to develop the capacity to, to feel things, if you like, heat and cold, softness and hardness, things that were dangerous to them, other little predator animals perhaps but, perhaps, but also dangerous wavelengths, ultraviolet wavelengths, for example, ex too much heat, too much cold, things that could kill them. They had to learn to differentiate through very primitive nervous systems eventually, through nervous cells, nervous system cells, they had to learn to differentiate what was good for them and what was bad for them. And in doing that, they had to separate themselves for the first time from their environment. They had to understand that they, even though it was all done, if you like, subconsciously, were different from what was outside them. They were enclosed and are enclosed in various, each cell is enclosed in its own, in its own way. And groups of cells and tiny animals are involved with groups of special, are, are made of groups of specialist cells, little tiny nervous systems, appendages, etc. So that was the beginning to differentiate and have an, an evolved specialist cells to tell them when, um, through, their, through their feelings, if you like, through, through feeling the environment, what was happening to them, and take action to uh, avoid anything that was dangerous to survive. It was all driven by survival. Now, eventually also, as they developed little appendages Little, so that they could move around, they also had to know where, what those appendages were doing. So they had to develop specialist cells again, not just to perceive changes in their environment, but where each part of them was, where their head was, where their tail was, where their little proto-arms or legs were. Uh, this was very important, to be able to map, in other words, the, part, the body parts in relation again to their environment. And they develop little control systems. If we go back, we can see the beginnings of those neurotransmitters that still exist today in human brain cells. 